Right, today we will be talking about all the gate commands for the robots for Buildcraft 7. And this will involve both the triggers and the actions involved in, with uh, the gates when the robots interact with them. So, for the first gate we're going to talk about is robot in station. The robot is sitting in the station, no matter what it's doing, if it's sitting there. Uh, it will trigger that to go off and uh, we can send out a signal for any of that. Next one is when robot is or the station is reserved and so essentially if a robot is going to that station all of a sudden that station is reserved for that robot. It does not mean it is re it, it, it does not mean that it is reserved for that robot when you sync it to that station it's just saying it, as soon as a station a robot wants to go to a station all of a sudden it is reserved and you, you'll see on the station when it turn when these little four little squares turn yellow and so we can have a signal set out so uh, for that and so we can send, so for whatever build you want to make you can send that out to whatever all right so our next gate command or our, yeah say our next trigger I should say is the sleep command of course it looks like that and essentially if a robot is in the station uh, in the station and sleeping then it will send a signal saying hey the robot's sleeping so I get so if you have build you might want to check if all your robots are sitting in the station well I guess that could be for anything, but let's say all your robot, if you, you have a situation where you want to know if your robots are idling, then that's a perfect way to go about it. Alright, so the next one, and the last trigger, is if the robot is linked with the station. Again, not to be confused with reserved. Reserved is when there's a robot that, that is actively going towards the station, that shows it to dock with it, to interact with it for a purpose. A linked warn will say, once I put that robot on there, it now says, okay, robot linked, and output it its own signal. And so you could, now I, I could see a possibility if you have a setup where maybe you want a display to show how many robots you have in a certain area, maybe you have a capacity for robots. Maybe you're working with them under the mod, say, computer craft, to show how much space you have left to add robots based on all your different uh, gates or your docking stations. Alright, so now we'll move on to the, the actions uh, for the robots. So the first one we'll look at is the uh, filter. And so, say, how this works is when you uh, create a gate and put a docking station down you can tell a robot what you want what you want it to pick up specifically in this case I I have I'm telling this robot only to pick up stone and then there is a very similar command to it which is called filter tool which uh, or filter tools which means uh, you only want it to grab a specific tool versus any tool. So in this case, our robot will only pick up stone. So if I go ahead and grab some stone, I grab some dirt. It will only pick up the uh, the stone. And what you're also going to see here is work and area being used. And all work and area is pretty much telling the robot to do is all of its work, all of it, whatever you want it to do, is within this area. So I have this one defined within these blocks. But now you're wondering why that robot is going all the way over there to a chest over there. Well, that's because similar to work and area, you can have a robot... Uh, load or unload in an area so maybe you have a chest somewhere else outside the area you want your uh, bot to work in 
Well, you can tell it, hey, you can unload and load in that area over there, which is what our robot went and did. Right, so, and, and sometimes working with robots, you, you'll notice that you might have to flick a switch to trigger the robot to go and do something if it doesn't do it immediately. That's because the robots are on a... Like if you notice right here, it's not going. That's because the robots are on a timer, so when they're sleeping, they'll sleep for so long and they'll check to see if any anything has been dropped within its working area. That's just a reduced lag on, the, on your game. So there's a command for that. In this case, wake up, and this will trigger the robot to wake up and look for something. If, there, if there's no, nothing for it to do, it'll just go back to sleep. So we can press that, and I'll go and pick up the stone. And I will not pick up the dirt, because we told it to only pick up stone. And then it'll go and unload, or load, it'll go and unload in that area over there, which we designated to do so. And so, our next one, which is a pretty common one, like say, if you, it, you, you most commonly you're going to have some sort of signal to tell your robot to work or to not work. Like these robots right here. And so you'll see, we'll have, we, when we do not give it a redstone signal, we just want the robot to go and go back to its station and not do anything. And so that's what it, this will do. So doing this, oh, let's go and turn you off. We'll force the robots to sit down and go to their station until we tell it not to. So that lets it go and finish whatever it was doing once that once that was no longer being triggered. So another one of our commands is to request an item. Now essentially, if we go to our gate right here on a redstone pulse we can tell a ro we want to tell a robot hey I want some stone I'll tell it to request it and put it into the pipe next to this chest so by doing that we go ahead and head and tell this robot to go grab some stone it's not working in any particular area so I'll go to the n nearest place it will find stone which is that chest over there that we had our other robot deposit in and so it will immediately go and do that. I had a blue sig pipe signal go down and triggered to wake up. Because if you s if you send that signal out, it'll just stay there until this robot checks to see if there's any requests being made. And this robot specifically is the robot that we specifically use this with is the delivery robot. And so, when we request items, it'll, when we request items, it'll go out and fetch them for us. Though, if we don't tell it to wake up, those requests will buffer until it eventually does wake up and say, oh, there's requests that need to be made. And so, in this case, this other one will tell it to go and find dirt, but I do not think there's dirt anywhere for it to pick up, except over there. See if you notice that yep, it's over there. So you have another delivery robot over there, or not delivery, a carrier robot that will carry stuff from one destination to another. Now, if you notice, it cannot go over there because that is the only pipe that is requesting or that that is providing items. And so, it's right now it's being reserved, so this robot cannot go over and use it. Now it's no longer reserved, so we can go over and use it to this pipe which is providing items. So that robot doesn't have anywhere to go, so it's going back to its reserved docking station where it will just sit there. And you go ahead and charge, and it'll come back here and charge when it runs out of juice. Go ahead and flip that switch, or we can tell it to wake up. So go down here, and that will segue us into providing an item. And so this will actively provide an item, or say it's actively telling other robots, that, hey, I, I provide this item. It's very similar to what we had over there for stone, to allow our robot from over there to request stone to go, allow that, our, this robot to go over here, grab our stone, and bring it back to us over there. 
and so that is provide item. Then our another one, which is more request item, is more active. Accepting item is a bit more passive. Otherwise, it'll always say, hey, I'll accept this item. Otherwise, it's a destination for the item. Like over here, our farming robots, we have this set up to always accept wheat. I believe this one here will accept other things. Yeah, wheat and uh, seed. So those will just passively accept those, as long as it's being told to. So as long as we'll do that, then we'll have this carrier, and, th and that's a big role of the carrier robot, is that it will look for places that accept or provide items, and it will go ahead and do that job. In this case, we have to work in solely this area. But we can also have robots like our picker robot will pick up any item unless you tell it to specifically pick up one item and say that you can drop that item off in say this chest another action we can use is to forbid a robot and this will be essentially this will exclude any one particular robot from using a particular gate. So if you have multiple robots, multiple chests in a specific area, but you only want go some going to certain chests, well, we can tell a robot that you're not, a particular type of robot that you're not allowed to go to this area or that area. Now I won't tell that particular robot that, or that particular instance of that robot that it cannot go there, but I'll just say in general, this type of robot you are forbidden from. And in this case, any picker is forbidden from using this uh, drop-off point. Simil similarly, we can oh, tell a robot, we can force a robot to use a certain point. Like in this case, pickers that works within, within this area will always use uh, this pipe to drop stuff off. Or in this case, drop off the items that we told to drop off. Alright, finally, we are here in a survival world to demonstrate using robots to build stuff. Like, say, we have a builder, or like, let's just say you have a builder, you have to supply that builder with items to build whatever structure you told to build. So in this case, I believe this is passive, it'll, there is no trigger after testing this, there really is no... I'm not sure if it's a bug or anything, but I don't need any trigger here to tell it to request items. Once that's there, it'll tell the robot that, hey, I am I need these items. This, this, and A, B, and C items. So we'll go ahead and put our blueprint in here and say, okay, so we need these items. So we tell our robot, hey, okay we're building this house of ours and so we need such and such items so we'll go and pick up the items drop them in there and our structure if we give power we'll go ahead and our builder go ahead and build the structure and so it's putting in all the needed items And so that's the sole purpose of request needed items for stuff like builders or any block that will be asking for specific items. But yeah, so that's about all there is to all the different gate commands and triggers or gate triggers and actions that you you need to know that covers all of them for all the different robots and so all your different uses and whatnot and I hope this video really helps and I'll see you guys next time